How you doing? I'm Dem, a guitar instructor from Detroit. In this video, we'll be covering chords, movable chords, alternate tunings, and chords associated with those alternate tunings. Time to make sure we are in tune. If you have a tuner, it should be calibrated to 440 hertz. If you do not have a tuner, just go ahead and match the pitch to me. I'm going to start with the six string E. Fifth string A. Fourth string D. The third string, G. The second string, B. Finally, the first string E. Now we're going to do some dexterity exercises. In our DVD, number one, pentatonic playing, we include this dexterity chart. Now the dexterities are written out in tab, and they tell us to do them in the first position. But today, we're going to do them in two different positions. I'm going to start on the third fret, one, two, three, four, and on the next string I'm going to take a big leap to 15, one, two, three, four. I'm going to go back on the fourth string, and then back and forth like this. Each note I want to be doubled as well. When we reach the top, we're going to come back, four, three, two, one. We're going to start that one on the 18th, and I'm going to come back to the 6th fret, four, three, two, one, and continue that. The next exercise, two, three, four, one. Backwards is one, four, three, two. The next one, three, four, one, two. Backwards is two, one, four, three. Backwards is three, two, one, four. The next one is the string jumper. We are working with two strings at a time. I'm going to start on the third fret, working with string six and five. One, two, three, four. Then I'm going to leap up to the fifteenth fret, working with strings five and four. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to keep that idea going, and it will be like this. When I'm completed, I'm going to leap back up to the 18th fret and I'm going to work with strings 1 and 2. Pinky on the 1, third finger on the 2, second finger on the 1, first finger on the 2, and of course I'm going to leap back down to my third position. The next one is our pinky stretcher. 
the tabs tell you to go one, two, three, five. Since we're working on the third fret, we are going to go three, four, five, seven. Then I will leap to 15, 16, 17, 19, and so on. <laughs> Backwards is going to be 19, 17, 16, 15, back down to 7, 5, 4, 3. These dexterity exercises should be done every day. Experiment, do them in different positions all over the fretboard. Uh, be creative, but do them every day. Fretboard domination. It is really important that we know all the notes on the guitar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up and down each string and call out the whole tones or the letters. I'm going to start with E. E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. Working my way backwards. E, D, C, B, A, G. E, D, C, B, A, G, F. The A string, working myself up to A. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. We're starting over. B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Working my way backwards. A, G, F, E. is D. D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. Backwards. D, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C, B, A, G, F, E, D. And my personal favorite, the G string. Working myself up to G. G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Coming backwards. G, F, E, D, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C, B, A, G. The second string is B. B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Coming backwards. B, A, G, F, E, D, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C, D. Finally, our last string. The first string, our E string. E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, D. Backwards. E, D, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C, B, A, G, F, D. In all of our videos, we have some sorts of fretboard domination game. These games are to be played every day. Be creative, think of your own games. Get a piece of paper and a pencil, draw a neck diagram, fill them in, study them. Knowing where you're at is crucial to being a great guitar player. Up first, all of the major open chords. We're gonna start with A major. A major consists of three notes. The root note A, the major third C sharp, and the fifth note of the A scale E. And again, those three notes together make up A major. B major. There's two ways, actually three ways, you can pull off this chord. Inside bar chord, 
second frets of the fifth string. I'm gonna lay my third finger down, my pinky's gotta cover two strings. The components of that B chord, B, the root note, D sharp, it's major third, F sharp, it's fifth. Next up, C major, very common chord. The C consists of three notes, C, E is the major third, and G is the fifth of C. Now we could play C in the open position. I could also play an inside bar chord and an outside bar chord. D major. D major of course consists of three notes. D, F sharp is its major third, and A is the fifth. There's my open D. Inside bar chord, outside bar chord. Now for E major. Your E major chord, the three notes, E, G sharp is the major third, B is the fifth. My open version, it's just really a major bar chord. I have an inside bar chord as well, and I can play my outside bar chord on the 12th. The F major chord. The three notes that make up an F, the F, A, and C. When I play the open F, that is really half of my major bar chord. I can also play it inside on the 8th fret, the inside bar chord. The last of the major chords that we're concerned about, G major. There is G major's open chord. It consists of G, B is the major third, D is the fifth of. I could play an inside bar chord on the 10. And I could also do a bar chord outside on the 3. And now for the close up. Please be sure to refer to your chord diagrams for any more help or explanation. Open A chord, the outside bar chord, and I can also shoot up to the 12th fret to have an inside bar chord. The B chord, that is the inside bar chord. The outside bar chord. And for you little kids, oftentimes that's a pretty good stretch, the inside bar chord. We can play B like we did A, just sliding up two frets, strumming from the fourth string on. The C chord. The inside bar chord, the outside C major bar chord. The open D chord. We're going to be visiting this chord again later, for that is a movable shape the inside D bar chord. And of course, outside on the 10th fret. 
bar chord. The E major open chord. Inside on the seventh is its bar form. I can also play the outside bar chord on the twelfth fret. The F open chord, like the D major shape, that is a shape and can be moved. It gets its first name from the first string. That is just half of the outside bar chord. And now the inside F major bar form. And the last of the major chords, G major, also have the outside G major bar form, inside bar form on the 10th fret, Now for the minor chords, starting with A minor. A minor consists of three notes. The A, the minor third, which in this case is C, and the fifth note of the A scale, which is E. There's my open A minor. It really comes from my A minor bar chord. Since we got the nut there, we really can't do that. So this is its open version. I could play that bar chord inside on the 12th fret, and outside bar chord on the 5th fret. Three versions of A minor. The B minor chord, that consists of three notes. The root note B, the minor third which is D, and the fifth note, which is F sharp. I'm going to be playing my B as an inside bar chord. If you at home cannot make that bar chord and cannot hold down that second fret, don't worry, you can still play a B chord. You just do what you did for A minor, sliding it up two frets, and strike strings four, three, and two. I also have the B available to me on the outside, seventh fret bar chord. Now, the C. C minor, I'm going to make the same inside bar chord that I did for B minor, just slide it up to the third fret inside bar chord for my C minor. And just like the A minor in the B, if you cannot hold down those frets with your first finger, we can cheat a little bit and just play half of the chord. I also have C on the 8th fret of the outside. D minor. The D minor open position, like your D major, is a movable chord. We'll get to that in a minute. The open D minor chord, inside D bar chord, and I can play the bar chord on the outside 10th fret. The E minor chord. E minor consists of three notes. The root note E. The minor third, which is G. The fifth note of the E minor scale, which is B. That is my open E. Inside, fifth string, seventh fret, is my E minor bar. I can also play the outside bar on the 12th fret. 
The F minor chord consists of three notes. The F, the G sharp, and the C. Now, I can play my F bar on the outside first fret. If I cannot hold my first finger down on all those strings, no worries. I can cheat a little bit, cover everything on the first fret, and strike strings three on. I also have an F available to me inside on the eighth fret for my inside bar. My last minor chord, G minor. I can play my outside bar form. G minor consists of G, B flat, D. My outside bar form, if I cannot achieve that with my first finger, I can break it up like I did F and hold down strings 3, 2, and 1 on the 3rd fret. I also have an inside bar form on the 10th fret available. And those are all your minor chords. Close-ups of the A minor chord. Again, that open chord position is just my inside bar form. The outside, first finger's laying flat, and I'm just playing a rock chord. Inside on the 12 is just like this position up on the 12, but I got a bar on the 12th fret. B minor. Inside bar form. If I cannot achieve it, I can cheat a little bit, do my A minor form, slide it up, first fingers on the third fret. I'm not allowed to hit anything but strings four, three, and two. And of course, the outside bar form. My C minor, inside bar, the same as the B minor, slid up one fret. If you are unable to achieve that bar form, remember, you can just cheat a little bit. By playing your A minor form, putting your first finger on the fourth fret of the second string. I also have my C minor bar on the outside 8th fret. The D minor chord form. The open position. And side bar chord on the 5. outside bar chord on the 10. My E minor chords. Open E is really just an E bar chord. I can also play my E minor bar form inside on the 7. outside on the 12. F minor, I can cheat and play the first three strings covering the first frets. That's just half of my outside bar form. And I have my bar form inside on the 8th. G minor, just like F, I can cover the third frets, string of one, two, and three. That's just half of my 
outside bar floor. I also have inside on the 10th fret. How you doing people? We are now on our bar chords. A lot of people struggle with bar chords, uh, so we're going to go over them. First, we're going to go over the minor on the outside. I'm going to start uh, with the A. I'm going to put my first finger on the 5th fret of the 6th string, 3rd finger on the 7th fret of the 5th, pinky 7th fret of the 4th, and my first finger must lay all the way across. And that is my minor bar chord. Now to achieve this, the easiest way is to make sure your first finger is off the fretboard. Because what happens if you don't, the strings end up getting in the wrinkles of your joints, causing the chord to fail. So by me pushing my first finger off the fretboard, almost a whole joint off the fretboard, it allows for a nice clean bar chord. Now these are movable. They get their name by whatever fret or letter my first finger is. So if this is A, I move up to the seventh, that is B, C, D, E, which is E, same thing, F, G, and that would be back to A. The inside movable minor bar. First finger, we're going to do it on C first. First finger, third fret of the fifth string. Third finger, fifth fret of the fourth. Pinky, fifth fret of the third. And I'm going to lower my second finger on the fourth fret of the second. That is my inside minor bar form. Just like the outside gets its name by whatever note your first finger is on, so 12th fret would be A, 2nd fret B, C, D, E, F, and G. Now for the major bar chord shapes. The major is a lot like the inside minor, just one string to your chin. I'm going to start on A. 1st finger, 5th fret of the 6th string, 3rd finger, 7th fret of the 5th, pinky, 7th fret of the 4th. I'm going to drop my 2nd finger on the 6th fret of the 3rd. And like the others, it's movable, gets its name from the 1st finger. A major, B, C, D, is just like open E, continuing with F, G, and I'm back to A. Remember, keep that first digit off the fretboard so every note is clean. The inside major, a little bit more difficult, I'm going to start on C. First finger, third fret of the fifth string, third finger, fifth fret of the fourth, pinky, fifth fret of the third, and I'm going to lay my pinky flat to get fifth fret of the second. So what's going on here? One of my fingers is covering two notes. There's another way to play it. First, second, third pinky. I struggle with that. I would rather leave my second finger in the air and cover two strings but the choice will be yours. Starting with A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and I'm back to A. Now for the minor seven bar chord, I'm gonna start with A, first fingers on the A, the fifth note of the scale, which is E. The seventh note, which is G. 
I'm going to lay my first finger flat. That is movable. Again, it gets its name by my first finger. Right now I'm on A, so I'm playing an A minor 7. B, C, D, E, which is like E, F, and G. My inside minor 7. I'm going to start on the C. Put my third finger on its fifth note, which is G. First finger's on the B flat, which is a 7. I'm also going to drop my second finger on the fourth fret of the second string for the D sharp, and it will sound like this. And like all your other bars, of course, this is movable. There's A, B, C, Side major sevenths are just like the inside minor sevenths. I'm going to start with A, A, the fifth, the seventh. There is my A major seventh. Of course, it's movable. B, C, D, E, F, My inside major sevenths. First, third, first fingers down, pinky. There is my C. Again, it's movable. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. The rock chord. A rock chord is typically two notes because we are typically playing a rock chord with distortion. And if you have distortion and you're playing more than two notes, it's not going to sound good. The most famous of all the rock chords would be the five chord. The reason why we call it the five chord is because I'm using my root note and the fifth note of the scale. One, two, three, four, five. Root, fifth. I also like to throw in my octave. Even though I'm playing three strings, I'm still only using two notes. What makes the five chord great is because the same chord is used for both minor and major. So if I'm playing a rock chord, I could play minor or major. Other rock chords that people do not realize or take into consideration very often. The bottom line is this. One plus any number is a chord. Number meaning number of a scale. The five chord, one, two, three, four, five of the minor scale. I'm gonna go ahead and use the sixth note of the minor scale. The minor sixth and the major sixth are two different locations. Here's my minor six. I'm going to use it around my five chord. Again, that is a minor six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Because the major sixth is a different note location. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here's my major six against the five. Moving on, the four chord is the same in both, minor, one, two, three, four, and major, one, two, three, four. 
So my four chord, I'm just gonna bar two, my root, and the next string down. So here's a five chord. a lot in metal. A7, my roots, the seventh note, two strings to the floor, that is minor, or my major if I'm playing in a mixolydian scale. Ionian is one fret different. I'm going to keep my second finger on the A. First finger, one string to the floor. That is a major rock chord. I'm using my root note and the major third. In this case, A and C sharp, just like your normal major chord. I've got my A and it's major third to C sharp. I'm going to put my third finger on the A, first finger, one string to the floor on the C, and that is a minor third, A minor third. I can lower my finger down to the B, and that is a 2, or some people call it a 9. So here are all my variations for A, and of course this is movable, you could be playing it anywhere. 5 chord, minor 6th, major 6th, 7th, major 7th, flat 5, 4, major 3rd, minor 3rd, 2, and those are all your rock chords. Some other chord shapes or inversions that people just don't realize will be, for instance, the D major shape, the D minor shape, the F, which is just half of a bar chord, and the F minor, which is half of a bar chord. Starting with the D major form. The D major gets its name by the D on the second string. So if I move that shape up to the 5th fret, that would be an F major. If I go up another whole step to the 7th, my root note is actually on the 8th. That is a G, an A, a B, a C, and back to D. And we didn't forget about E. Now, for the minor, shape D minor. It's another shape that I could shuffle around. Again, getting its name from the second string. So if that's D minor, E minor, F minor, G minor, A minor, B minor, C minor, D. The F chord that is a major shape taking from the major bar form. A lot of people can't do a bar chord, so we can cheat a little bit, use half of it. Very popular. This gets its name from the first string. That's F. If I move it up to the third fret, G, A, B, C, D, E. Now, just like the major, you have a minor bar chord. I can cheat a little bit. Use my first fingers to cover all three notes. Third finger, whole step above. That is F minor, G minor, A minor, B minor, 
C minor, D minor, E minor. I could use, uh, let's take a little piece uh, from a popular song, a little chorus rhythm. Then you ride the A. Use the A major form. Use the D form on the 10th fret. Go back to the A. All A's. If I'm going to play open chords, they're going to occupy open to the third fret. Now there are only so many open chords to use. So we have a capo. And what a capo does is it allows us to get away from the bar chord and we can still use open chords. So if I'm playing this chord progression, E minor, G major, D major, A major, I could apply capo wherever I like and everything changes. I'm gonna drop it on the first fret I'm still going to play my E chord form, G form, D form, A form, but because capo is applied, all the chord names really change. That's really an F minor. That's really a G sharp. That's really a D sharp. Really useful for singing. I'm going to move it up to the third fret now. Again, same chords my E form, G form, D form, A form. But since capo is on three, that E form becomes a G minor. I am now on A sharp, F major, C major, because capo is on the three. I can slide capo wherever I want to and play the same things. different tunings. The other guitar that was in my possession was tuned standard at 440. E, A, D, G, B, E. This guitar is tuned half a step down. And what that means is instead of it being E, A, D, G, B, E, it would be E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, or the notes that are on the 11th fret. Now those notes also have another name. It would be the notes of the 10th fret sharpened. So that would be D sharp, G sharp, C sharp, F sharp, A sharp, D sharp. Here's what a guitar half a step down sounds like. Slightly lower is all. Helps for the voice. Also, another purpose of it makes the strings really slinky. Vibratos, hammer-ons, and pull-offs. Just as the guitar could be tuned standard E, A, D, G, B, E, it could be a half step down, everything flatted. I could also tune the guitar a full step down to D, G, C, F, A, D, the notes of the 10th fret, and that would be called a uh, D standard. Now, Another tuning, very popular, would be drop tuning. If the guitar was tuned standard, they would call it drop D. Since this guitar is a half step down, and I were to drop the string a full step lower, it would be called drop C sharp. Now, 
Now, the chords, what would normally be a typical five chord, using my first and my third, if I drop to it, my five chord becomes a little bar. Sounds really good. Now, no matter what we tune to, whether it's standard, half step down, full step down, step and a half, you can always lower that sixth string to have the drop tuning. Some open tunings. This is open D. D. A. D. F sharp, that's D major third. A. D. When I strike the chords open, that's a D major chord. All my major chords will be barred. open tunings, it's a great thing to use a slide. tuning consists of D, G, D, G, B, D. This is really another slide. I used the ball on the last segment. Arguably not very cool. I don't have my slide anywhere. Can't find it. Been looking all around all day. So what? I don't have a slide. It does not mean that uh, I can't improvise. I'm now going to use a battery. I'm going to hold it between my first and second finger and all I do is slide up and down the strings. When I'm using a slide, I want to be right on the fret not in the fret. Thanks for checking out our video. Hope you learned a lot about open chords, chord inversions, movable shapes, working with your capo, alternate tunings, a little bit of slide. Be sure to catch us on the web at learntoburnfast.com. Again, I'm Dem from Detroit. Thanks for rocking, and we'll catch you next time.